Hi, I'm Bernie Wild. And I'm Susan Wild. We've been living and traveling full time in an RV for going on seven years now. And during this time, we have stayed at a lot of RV parks and campgrounds. In this video, we're gonna share some of the common campground courtesies that we feel will make everyone's camping experiences go better. Yeah, and these are certainly just our opinions. We'd love to hear yours. First up is driving speed. Campgrounds generally have kids running around, people walking dogs, walking back and forth to restrooms and showers, and speeding vehicles can really be an issue. Yeah, I think sometimes people come off the roadways and highways and things and they come into the campground and they maintain similar speeds and it, it just becomes a, a safety issue. And not only a safety issue, but it does stir up the dust in some campgrounds and that just makes it unpleasant if you're trying to eat or relax. Yeah, so really watching your speed in campgrounds is very important. Next up is boundaries, specifically sticking to your site and not encroaching on that of others. Now we're not talking about quickly cutting through an empty site if the campground's not busy and you're on your way to the showers. We're talking about letting children, dogs run through uh, occupied sites that people are camping in. Yeah, we've seen people that have ran out of space in their campsite pitch a tent in the adjacent site that's rented by somebody else. And we just feel that it's uh, good to respect the boundaries. Another issue can be excessive noise. Now this may be music, TVs, even laughter. People are wanting different experiences out of their camping and sometimes they just want to listen to the wind in the trees and if they even like your kind of music, they may not be wanting to hear that at that particular time, so. Yeah, and it, it is difficult if you're in a campground to um, contain every <laughs> little noise and everything. And, and like Susan said, people are there for different reasons. Some are there to party yeah. and, and others are there to hear the birds or the wind through the trees. So um, we just have to keep all that in mind when we're camping in, together. And uh, to if your music is up loud enough for every single person <laughs> to hear in the campground, perhaps that's a little overboard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that might be a little excessive. So we always do our best to try to keep our noise within the boundaries of our site as well. Another courtesy has to do with fires, campfires. Certainly the most important aspect of this is safety. We want to make sure that we always have a safe fire, that it doesn't get out of control and that we can quickly get it out if need be. And even if the state or the campground is not prohibiting fires, but you can tell that conditions aren't conducive to having a campfire, then we shouldn't have one. If it's too windy or those types of things, you know, fires can get quickly get out of control and it's just better to err on the uh, side of safety. Now, another aspect of uh, campfires that we want to keep in mind with regard to cur courtesy is um, smoky fires yeah. are just uh, a huge annoyance. Yeah. <laughs> they can just loft into other uh, sites and just create a, a lot of problems for people. They, they can sometimes even stink and, yeah. and just over yeah, overwhelming. Yeah, and there are a couple of things that can contribute to smoky fires. Trying to burn wood that's too wet to burn, um, burning trash. Uh, definitely, you know, plastics, rubber, anything like that that you put into a fire is probably going to either make it smell or make it smoky or both. And so, you know, just making sure that you're burning wood in your fire is yeah. a really good courtesy. Yeah, it definitely goes a long way to make sure that you're being very conscientious with, with safety and courtesy when having a fire. A courtesy that we feel is very important has to do with pets. Having your pets off leash in campgrounds can be a real problem for some people. Now, for example, our dog is deaf and almost blind. And even though normally he's friendly, if a dog comes running up to him, even if the dog, it, the other dog is friendly, may cause him to react unexpectedly. So uh, keeping your dog on a leash is something that's very important for us. Yeah, we actually keep our dog on a leash even though he is very friendly, but because of his condition, we know that he could have a kind of a scared reaction with somebody and maybe nip at him or 
or scare them somehow or something. So we go the extra uh, length there and, and make sure that we keep him uh, on a leash and are very protective about, you know, other dogs running up to him. Yeah. We just don't uh, know what's going to happen. We don't know how our dog's going to respond. And a lot of times people will say, oh, our dog is friendly. Yeah. You know, you'll hear that often or he he's, doesn't bite or she's very good about this or that. And that's only part of the story there. Yeah. Other people don't necessarily <laughs> want your dog running up to them. We love dogs and we don't even want dogs to come flying up to us like that. Yeah. And you definitely want to make sure that, you know, you're picking up after your dog. This is a, a big issue anywhere in a campground or not in a campground. Uh, if you have a dog, you that's part of the responsibility of having the dog is picking up after them. <laughs> yeah, and immediately we often see uh, bags laying around too. Yeah. Like they'll go ahead and uh, pick it up and then put it in a plastic bag and then throw it off to the side somewhere <laughs> as if they're going to come back and get it, which often does not happen. happen. <laughs> so you're, you're better off just uh, picking it up then and there and disposing of it right away. Um, that's, that's the best thing. And then that way no one else has to come in contact with it and so we're we're very particular about that type of thing another thing can be excessive barking now you know it's uh, dogs are dogs and some people walk by it may trigger a dog to bark but if your uh, dog is just barking excessively then that's something that you should probably address yeah, and you can guarantee that people don't like it. <laughs> I mean, if you're wondering, yeah. I, I would guess that it's safe to say that others don't like that. Yeah. And like Susan said, I mean, if, if you walk by with your dog, chances are a, a dog in another site is going to bark. And that's actually normal behavior. That's something that they're going to do. They're being protective and they're, they're letting you know that uh, I'm, I'm over here and this is my territory <laughs> yeah. or whatever else. That, you know, I'm not the dog whisperer here, yeah. but there's, there's stuff going on there that is normal behavior. And, uh, and then it ends like that, yeah. uh, especially if there's a, a, a good uh, pet owner there that's going to, um, you know, hush them at, at, at the time if, uh, that need be if they don't. <laughs> but, um, yeah, sometimes they'll just keep on going when maybe people will go off and leave their dog alone and yeah. they'll just bark all the time. And that's just not acceptable. Yeah. Even if you're there, you may have kind of become deaf to it, but uh, other people haven't. Right. <laughs> Something else that's very important is for adults to supervise the kids that they're responsible for. Now, we've seen this, and I'm sure you have, where kids are just kind of running amok. <laughs> and I, I understand this a little bit. Some of the parents say, yeah, go ahead, go off and play and everything like that. But uh, while you're having your peace and quiet, it's probably likely that they're off causing uh, noise for someone else, you know. Yeah, and we've been in a, a campground situation where I've seen kids come into, maybe there's a general store there or a recreation room and the parents just gave them some money and told them to go do what they want to do and it, they'll be there for hours basically, uh, you know, either bothering or being the responsibility of the employees at the campground and you don't want that. <laughs> yeah, we're not saying don't let your kids go off and do things. It's just that, you know, be mindful of what they're doing so yeah. that it's not somebody else's responsibility because they probably have enough of their own responsibilities or they're probably not trying to have more <laughs> responsibilities. So it's it's just a good thing all around to, to make sure that we're supervising the kids that we're responsible for. The last courtesy that we want to discuss has to do with trash. Yeah, when we go into the backcountry, we know and hear things like leave no trace, take only pictures, leave only footprints, leave things better than they were, that kind of thing. We feel like that should be the same way in RV parks and campgrounds, that it's not the place to litter. I know we feel like, you know, we paid for these spots and things like this, but that's not a license to just throw trash all over the place and, and uh, leave our garbage. Another really important issue that we feel that people should remember is the campfire pit is not a trash can. Now we've seen cigarette butts, uh, plastic bread ties, leftover food, Bottle caps. Bottle caps, cans, utensils. People, people grooming their dog and leaving all the dog hair in the fire pit as if it were a trash can. And it's it's really not. And the only thing that should be in there is 
is firewood. <laughs> yeah, ash and, and things like mm -hmm. that. And I know uh, there are some conscientious people that feel that they're actually doing something right by putting all their garbage in the trash pit. <laughs> I understand that. I understand that people are doing that out of the kindness of their heart, but um, I don't know of any campground that, that wants that. Yeah. Um, and just think about it if you went out into the woods at a designated campsite, uh, those types of things should be carried out. They shouldn't be left there. It's the leave no trace <laughs> aspect of it. So if you have a, a, a fire pit that's, that's not, like Susan said, a place to, to throw all the garbage and, and put all those things in there, um, we, we've seen all manner of things and digging bottles and cans and all that kind of stuff <laughs> that's never going to burn. It's never going anywhere. Even things like uh, pistachio shells and yeah. things like that, any of that kind of stuff, it's, it's just not the place for it. It's, it's the place to... to burn wood mm -hmm. and that should turn to ash and um, normally they have ways to, to to empty out the ash and stuff like that so and just while we're on it um, put the fire out yeah <laughs> make yeah. sure it's out yeah. before you don't leave. don't check out and leave the campground with a fire going for sure <laughs> yeah but anyway the, the the trash thing we just see so much of that and it's unfortunate and most of us uh, know that we we shouldn't behave that way that we shouldn't just throw our wrappers all over the place and stuff like that so um, it, it is um, sadly uh, the few that are, are doing this but um, it, it is uh, out there as a as a courtesy i think that we yeah. should all just adhere keep to. in mind someone's gonna have to clean it up these are some of the campground courtesies that we appreciate we'd love to get your comments on these and some of the others that we haven't mentioned and please remember to share subscribe and click on that little notification bell thanks, thanks for, for watching, watching.